spiritual practices have just been really helpful for me personally. I broke it in three parts. Your sustaining practices, your daily communion with Jesus, and we'll, we'll review that just a little bit. Deepening practices, you've been talking about the last two weeks, longer times with the Lord. Today we'll talk about some things that I found helpful to pray more ceaselessly throughout the day, but I'd like to begin with a prayer. So this is called St. Patrick's Breastplate or St. Patrick's Lorica. Probably didn't, wasn't prayed by St. Patrick since the earliest copies we have are about four centuries after he lived. But it's made its way into some songs and things. It's really a beautiful, beautiful prayer. And um, I just wrote it on there so you'd have it. But it, it is one of the prayers I pray every morning. And we'll talk about how that came to be uh, as we unfold things this morning. But I'd like to pray my kind of dumbed down, uh, more flexible version for us this morning. So if you'll bow with me, let's pray together. <clears throat> Christ be with us this day. Christ before us, Christ behind us, Christ above us, Christ beneath us, Christ at our left hand, Christ at our right, Christ within us by your Spirit. Christ when we rise up, Christ when we sit down, Christ when we lay down at day's end. Compass us with your love all the day long, oh Christ so that you, Christ, might be in the heart of those who think of us, Christ in the mouth of those who speak of us, Christ in the eye of those who even see us, Christ in the ear of those who hear us. Fit us for your good purposes this day, O oh Lord Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. So that supposedly St. Patrick prayed that prayer when he was about to be ambushed by his opponents, and the Lord mysteriously blinded their eyes, and they only saw deer. They didn't see St. Patrick and his buddies, so that's the myth behind St. Patrick's prayer. It's a beautiful prayer, um, and I do pray it um, most every morning, and I'll, I'll tell you why as we go along this morning, but first I'd like to do a little bit of review. We've talked about sustaining practices um, when we first started the class, your daily devotions, and I gave you a couple ways of thinking about that. It's really helpful. Four particular kind of perspectives or motivations. Can anybody remember even one of the motivations that we talked about, um, about meeting with God? One of the things that draws us to that time and makes us long for it and look forward to it. Because um, our sin ruins people around us. Right. Right. Our sin wrecks us and the people that we love the most in this world. Our great need is the way I think I put it. Our great need drives us. Remember, any other motivations? Anybody else? God wants to be with us. Uh, the mind-blowing one, right? God looks forward to our company. Um, we pick that up in Christ and the way he dealt with people, but also in the end of the scriptures. So. We also talked about um, our great longing is to know God, really. To get to know God is a pretty awesome thing, and that's delightful. And God is amazing. He's awesome. He made the world. He put us in it, and He loves us. And so I talked about those motivations. I gave you a key perspective that these practices in the morning, they're not just something I do, but it's someone that I meet. So I'm not getting up to check Christian boxes. I read, did my read through the Bible in, uh, in a week plan or whatever it is that you're on. And I got through my lengthy prayer list, and I'm good to go. But I do those things. I read my Bible, and I pray to move me into the company of God. So it's not just something that I do. It's someone I meet those morning times. And we looked at different approaches, particularly how you get started. Uh, how you start those times can really make a difference between whether it's task or relationship, right? And we want it to be tasks that serve relationships. So we talked about... The Names of God list, John Stott's Good Morning Prayer, certain listening apps, uh, Lectio 365, the Daily Liturgy Podcast, the Dwell app, all things that kind of put you under the scriptures to listen to them. We talked about reflective reading of scripture with journaling and the Dwell app and Donald Whitney's praying scripture, all of those kind of things. Um, 
Are any of those practices following you and helping you now, four weeks later? So you've been labbing with some of this stuff off and on. Are any of those things helpful for you in, the, in your times with the Lord, your daily times with the Lord? Love, love to hear a couple of you that are finding some of that kind of Velcroing to you. So uh, it's a smorgasbord. You don't eat everything on the smorgasbord, right? You shouldn't probably try to eat everything. But you pick things from it that are helpful for you. So I do not do the, all of these practices every single day. They move in and out. Some of them move in and out of me seasonally. Some of them different days, different things might prop up. Lectio 365, it's, the, it's worth every penny you paid for it. <laughs> One of the best, best free apps that I've, I've run across. Um, so then we moved on to deepening practices. We saw, you saw last week at length that this is Jesus. Probably the most prominent prayer practice in Jesus' life was this one, that he kept stealing away with times with the Lord. Mark 1, rising very early in the morning while it was still dark, he departed and went to a desolate place, and there he prayed. And Luke 5 says, 16 says, he would often withdraw to desolate places and pray. So some of you have found time during this class to slip away for some time with the Lord. Some of you, that's been your practice prior to this on a retreat or personally. So um, this is a lecture and a lab. If you don't do the lab, you fail the class, right? You don't get credit. You just have to keep coming back and taking this class endlessly. So it's really good, it would be really good, if not by next week at class end, that, that you would commit to a half day of prayer as a result of this class in the near future. If you can do it this week, great, you get bonus points. But if you can't, um, we will let you do work after graduation, you just can't walk, <laughs> right, okay? So, but please do, it's, it's a joy, it's a delight. You get to sit with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords for the better part of a day. Um, don't miss that opportunity, but it's, it's a joy. I'd hate for you to, to miss that. So on your handout, there's a list of a dozen or so passages in Paul where he uses this always ceaseless, steadfast kind of language. I would like you to read all 12 or so of those verses, and I just want you to to hear how often this language shows up in Paul.
And on the one hand, the language Paul uses is the language of perseverance. So we talk about ceaseless prayer, he's talking about persevering in prayer, not giving up in prayer. Um, so if there's someone you've been praying for a long time, Paul would encourage you not to give up, to pray ceaselessly for that person. Um, and this is where a prayer list is so very helpful for me. So if Jet says to me, please pray for me about X, and I'm like, yeah, I'll pray for you about that. And we're going to rely on my memory for me to be faithful to my commitment to pray for Jet. That's a really bad idea. Like, my memory is the worst. And a, li a simple list really, really helps me. So. Um, a couple ways you can do it. If you are low tech, if you do not use tech in your devotional life, you take a piece of paper, you fold it in half, right? And then you fold it in half again. It's a blank paper. This is all I had. Um, and then you write across the top, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of each column, Saturday, Sunday, daily. And then you write down what you're going to pray about. And you have a Monday list and a Tuesday list. <coughs> and a Wednesday list, and a daily list. So um, you have to either be really messed up or family for me to pray for you every day, right? You don't want to be, you don't want to be in such dire straits that I'm praying for you every day, right? I have 21 people in my family. By the time I'm done praying with them every day, there's not a whole lot of daily, you've got to be in, bad, in a bad way for me to pray for you every day. But there's a lot of people I pray for weekly, and so, so this is a wonderful, simple system. If you're low tech, I highly recommend this. You take this, you put it in your Bible, and you've got a, a, a way to be praying faithfully, to persevere in prayer for the people God is prompting you to pray for in your life, for uh, issues, things, countries, missionaries, teachers, nurses, whoever it is that's in your life that you're praying, neighbors, this helps. Um, and so my wife still uses this system. It's in her Bible, and she uses this. So when they came out with technology that helped do this for me, I jumped all over that. And so I use an app called Prayer Mate. Are you familiar with Prayer Mate? Not Prayer Matey, Prayer Mate. Um, it's free. It's a really good app. And it allows you to build um, a daily prayer list on any frequency you want. So if I'm praying. Um, if, if the Meekins are so messed up that they're on my daily prayer list, I'm praying for them every day. So they're gonna, I'm going to put, I'm going to mark daily by them. But maybe Shay, I'm only praying for weekly. She's on Wednesday. So every Wednesday, it's going to add her to my Wednesday prayer. And maybe Rick only needs prayer once a month, so on the 13th. And so when those things all line up, every day it's building me a unique prayer list of the people on the frequency and rhythm that I think I should be praying for them, depending on their need and my relationship with them my responsibilities to them. And it'll build a prayer list for you every single day that you, that you can pray and work your way through. Um, it has things you can add, like um, prayers of confession. It add, you can add doxology. You can add the, their prayers to put on the armor of God, um, every piece of the armor of God every day. There are all kinds of different things you can like subscribe to, and it'll add them into your prayer list, again, at your request and under your control. So I've found that to be super helpful in me being ceaseless in that sense, persevering in prayer, um, simply building a list. And the Prayer Made app you can find online, it's free. Uh, another great resource that's been made available. Um, but the other side of ceaseless prayer is simply praying more, praying more often throughout the day, not praying in the morning and then forgetting about God all day except maybe meals. Maybe meals, you know, because we're going so fast and so hard. But finding ways to invite and engage and delight in God throughout the day. And um, that's, that's kind of the focus that we want to talk about. Here's another verse. I didn't even give you this verse. First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 is probably the more renowned one. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So the will of God is that you would move through the day in conversation with him, talking with him throughout the day. That's his will. Rejoicing, praying about your troubles, giving thanks for his, 
his care for you in, in the all of that. Um, I think you have a quote by maybe John MacArthur on your sheet about what ceaseless prayer is. Let me read it to you. I may have a little, a little of a precursor to what I wrote on there, but he describes ceaseless prayer as living in continual God awareness or consciousness where everything you see and experience becomes a kind of prayer lived in deep awareness of and surrender to God. It should be instant and intimate communication, he says, not unlike that which we enjoy with our best friend. That's a neat idea. If your best friend was present with you throughout your day, that's what ceaseless prayer is like, that kind of back and forth conversation. He goes on to say, to pray without ceasing means when you are tempted, you hold the temptation before God and ask for his help. When you experience something good and beautiful, you immediately thank the Lord for it. When you see evil around you, you ask God to make it right and to use you toward that end if that's his will. When you meet someone who does not know Christ, you pray for God to draw that person to himself and to use you to be a faithful witness. When you encounter trouble, you turn to God as your deliverer. And so you can kind of see how ceaseless prayer begins to work into every fabric of our, of our life. You don't have to become a monk or a nun to pray ceaselessly, right? We can do it right where we are, and that seems to be the intent of God. Although there was a monk named Brother Lawrence, not my namesake, Brother Lawrence, and he wrote an odd little pamphlet, little booklet on prayer, but it's full of, it's the story of his life and then some lessons on prayer from his life. And he has this to say about ceaseless prayer. He says, um, God does not ask much of us, merely a thought of him from time to time, a little act of adoration, sometimes to ask for his grace, sometimes to offer him your sufferings, at other times to thank him for the graces past and present he has bestowed on you in the midst of your troubles, to take solace in him as often as you can. Lift up your heart to him during your meals and in company. The least little remembrance will always be the most pleasing to him. One need not cry out very loudly. He is nearer to us than we think. It's a beautiful picture that God is eager to hear our prayers at any point all along the way. And, and that teaches us something about God, right? If we can pray ceaselessly, it means God is always present, always available to hear everywhere, um, whether that's at home or in school or in work, or as the New Testament says, in prison, right? A lot of Paul's prayers were prayed in prison, so God is available everywhere. And he, it also tells us that he's good because one of the things that shows up most often about ceaseless prayer is giving thanks always. That's a recurring idea. And that just tells us that God's goodness is always around us, always with us, always, always deserving of our intention. And, you know, we've, it also tells us something about place. So it's a wonderful thing to go over to do gardens and spend the day in a beautiful maintained garden where everything is perfect and delightful. But you can pray anywhere. You really can pray anywhere. And the exhortation of the New Testament is to pray anywhere, everywhere, always, right? Um, anywhere, in your car, in your bathroom, in prison, in a garden, in the kitchen, in the laundry room, we can and should be learning how to, how to squeeze prayer into those places, invite God into those places. So let me share with you kind of three approaches that I found helpful in praying more throughout my day. And they're on the back of your hand out there. Um, the first one is called fixed times of prayer. And if you read ancient prayer stuff, it's sometimes called the daily office or the liturgy of the hours. And it's been practiced by Christians for centuries. Um, if not millennia, and the Bible indicates some of this kind of practice. So Psalm 119, the psalmist says, seven times a day I praise you for your righteous rules. And the idea is that he, he had seven times that he set aside each day. And we'll see this in a minute, that this actually played out in church history where they had seven set prayer times. Uh, if you look at Psalm 55, this one's especially significant for us, I think. Evening and morning and at noon. I utter my complaint and moan, and he hears my voice. So he had three times each day that he was going before the Lord with his troubles and speaking to him, evening and morning and at noon. Uh, we pick up that same rhythm in Daniel 6, where it says Daniel got down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he had done previously. So 
you pick up on in the book of Acts in chapter 3, they went to the temple and said it was the hour of prayer. That's 3 o'clock. They had a set hour of prayer um, that they would go through. Um, they started their work day at 6, and at 9 they took a break. At noon they had lunch. They came back in a siesta of sorts. They came back at 3. Um, they ended the day at 6, and then they had evening prayers and prayers upon awakening. Those are the seven times of Psalm 119 um, that, that we read about um, in church history. So, but for us, I want us to think about morning and evening and noon as a good rhythm for us to begin with, um, the ways to start. Uh, I am a big fan of bracketing our, your day with God, right? Begin and end your day with God. Let God be the first thing on your mind and lips. Let him be the last thing on your mind and lips or, or darn close to it, right? So most of you have already been mentored and discipled in morning practices. We talked about that in sustaining practices. Those things happen often for us in the mornings. We're reading the word and praying and enjoying God's company in the mornings. I want to encourage you, if, if you don't already do it, this might be your lab practice this week, end your day with God, right? We, we see that in Psalm 55. Um, but it's, it just makes sense that we would pause at the end of our day, give thanks to God for his mercy and his kindness, and confess any known sin and cling to his grace, right? And so the, that process has been written out. You, are, you already have this when we talked about the flip side of it, which is um, Lectio Divina. But this is just that practice. Jake Mason put this together in a very simple process, and I'm going to simplify it even further. At the end of your day, you take a few moments, a few minutes, and you just think back over your day and you give thanks to God, right? For his kindness throughout the day. A beautiful sunset, you know, a child that took a nap. Uh, you know, work that went well, a delicious meal, time with a friend, whatever it is, you look back over your day and give thanks to God. And then you confess any sin that comes to mind. This doesn't have to be extensive self-examination. The Holy Spirit will bring to mind the sins of the day if you are willing to for confess and forsake them. So you ask God to do that. And if you spoke poorly or you thought badly or you acted terribly, to confess that to God. And, and recognize that the cross, there's grace there greater than your sin, right? So just giving thanks, confessing any known sin, and, and clinging to the cross, um, that's, that's the exam. And Jake's written out a little fuller um, process there, but that's basically. And doesn't that make sense that, that that would be a beautiful way to end your day, right? Just, just to exalt our God in that way by those practices. It's much better for sleeping, I have found, than watching um, crime shows about abduction of children, which I know people, that's how they end their day. Yeah, I watch like CSI and people are dying, or I watch alien invasion movies, and then I wonder why I can't sleep. This is a great way to help you go to bed and sleep well at night, to settle accounts with God and, and to give them thanks. Now, Lectio 365, right? Um, we've talked about that app. It has an evening version, a nighttime version. It's built around the examine. So they'll walk you through a scripture and prayer, looking back over your day and confessing sin and giving thanks to God. Now again, there's a lady who reads and she has the sleepiest voice on earth. So there's no guarantee if you try to do this in bed that you'll make it through. But again, what a great way to fall asleep, right? What a great way to fall asleep. Someone praying over you and reading scripture over you. So there are worse things. This is different than falling asleep during a sermon. That's bad. <laughs> that is bad. But falling asleep at the end of the day to scripture and prayer, uh, I can't think of a better way to end your day. So, um, so th my current practice at the end of my day, I, I, when the weather permits and I am willing to take the time, I step out on my back porch, and as I stand there and look into the woods behind my house, in the dark of night, I, I think back through my day and I give thanks and I confess any sin that comes to mind. And then I go and I turn on the Dwell app and Psalm 23 puts me to sleep. 
it plays for eight minutes with a one minute pause between each one. Sometimes I'll do my exam in, in the one minute pauses. There's usually two or three pauses that it'll do and I'll think back through my day when, but right now God has me in Psalm 23 for his purposes and uh, so that's how I end my day with prayer, reviewing my day and listening to, to scripture. And, uh, and that's, that's been a really, really helpful way to end your day. Simple, only takes a few minutes, um, but bracketing your day with God. If you don't end your day with, if you don't start your day with God, obviously that's really a helpful thing. If you don't end your day with God, but you have a morning time, let me encourage you, that might be your lab this week. <clears throat> it's super, super helpful. And then once you've bracketed your day, that it, Psalm 55 says evening and morning and at noon. So a midday course correction. Because a lot of times we'll say hey to Jesus in the morning and then we'll get running so fast we don't even think about him until maybe night. And so this is the midday going, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, hey Lord. <laughs> still need you. Still could use a little help. Still got this ahead of me the rest of the day. Sorry for what I did this morning. Uh, let's try to <laughs> sort that out and walk through the rest of the day together. You might read a psalm. You might read a, a favorite verse. You might review what you read in the morning. Um, I personally like to recite the Apostles' Creed. I find it to be a very meaningful reaffirmation of my faith that helps strengthen me to make it through the rest of my day. So I do that. Um, this is the hardest one for me to be consistent in. So my phone reminds me, hey, dummy, uh, you should recite the Apostles' Creed. Now it's 1 o'clock. And so it goes off every day. And my phone reminds me to do that. And a number of days I ignore it. I'm like, I don't have time for that. And I'm too busy for God. And I just push it off. But something in your day Make you pause, turn towards God, and, and commit the rest of your day to His care. Right? I know a lot of people use their commute home at the end of the day for that purpose. They give thanks, they, they commit their, the rest of their evening with their families uh, to God. It's good to do that midday. It's good to do it's Often we're running so fast that we've uh, run ahead of God during the course of the day. So uh, if you like a structure and you have access to it, so the Anglican use a thing called the Book of Common Prayer. Um, it's almost unusable unless you know the secret Anglican handshake, which I do not know. <laughs> they won't share it with me. I don't know how to use it because the pieces are all over the book and you have to put them together. Well, there are websites like this one. This is bookofcommonprayer.net. They took, they actually told you the secret Anglican handshake and they put all the pieces together for you. So the opening prayers and the scriptures and the closing prayers. If you like lots of structure, this could be helpful for you. They have a morning. There's this thing called the daily office. That's their daily liturgy for a time of prayer. There's a morning one, there's a midday one, and there's an evening one. The midday and the evening ones are much shorter. The morning one is a good bit longer. <clears throat> and I, not being an Anglican, I pick and choose. I, a lot of times we'll use their opening and closing prayers and do my own Bible reading and such in the middle. But um, but if you like structure, there's a midday one. Click on the daily office and it'll take you to there and you can explore that if, if you'd like. Um, but that does, that, if you like structure, that could be helpful for you. So questions about bracketing your day, about fixed day prayer, or about how you could do this midday. Let me run all along to the, to the next, the second thing that I found helpful for ceaseless prayer. And that is really, it more answers, it's not so much as a how as it is a what, so what do you pray during these little prayers that you're praying throughout the day? And I like to, I like to pray scripture as much as possible. I find the, the language of scripture really keeps me near to the heart and will of God. So um, there's some examples, I think, on your handout. Um, let's see. Uh, the shortest one is called the Kyrie, and that's just a Greek word for Lord. And it simply is praying, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. And I pray that all the time. I find it to be so helpful. There's rarely a situation I'm in that a prayer for mercy doesn't fit. And I'm often in situations where I don't know what to pray beyond that. So if I'm prompted to pray for the person who's checking, out, checking me out at Walmart, I don't know anything about their world. I don't know how to pray. But I can pray, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy on this person who's serving me and helping me now. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy upon them. 
I can pray that for when a fire truck goes past or an ambulance goes past, uh, there's a siren. You know, I, I pray it for my neighbors. Sometimes I pray it for my kids. I don't know exactly what to pray for my kids. I know that they need the mercy of God in Christ. And so sometimes this gets me started praying too. I'll say, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy for Rick. And then I think, oh, I remember some things about Rick. I, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, and Rick at work because he's dealing with X or Y. Or, so sometimes it just gets me started, but sometimes it's all I know to pray. And um, I pray it uh, often. Um, if you have a friend who's an Orthodox Christian, they pray what's called the Jesus Prayer. It's, a, um, it's uh, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me, a sinner. It's often helpful to, to begin times of confession for me that way. Um, I've fleshed it out a little farther, and I call it the Jesus Prayer on steroids. Um, Je Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God and Savior of us all, have mercy on me, a great and terrible sinner, yet by greater grace, a child of God, your brother or your sister, and your friend. And there's several things that I love about that prayer. I love that where it takes me, I'm not left just that just a terrible sinner, but I'm also a child of God and a brother, his Christ brother and friend. So I, I love that. That helps me get started praying sometimes, especially in times of confession that's uh, very helpful for me. Um, there is on our resource page something that looks like that. It's a list of scripture prayers. There's three pages of them like that that I've used to pray for different things at different times. Um, I share it with you. You can use them or you can start your own and do it in a much more normal fashion than the way I've done it here. They're just kind of boxed all over the page. For whatever reason, I thought that was helpful at the time. Um, but they're just short scripture prayers that you can pray. And you, often the best short scripture prayers you can pray are the ones that you're thinking about and memorizing or meditating at present. So for me right now, if I'm praying for you, I'm probably praying Psalm 23 for you because that's what God has me in thinking about praying through, writing about, studying all the things that I'm doing. Reading Chip McDaniel's doctoral dissertation on Psalm 23. I found a bootleg copy of that from Jerry Lasseter. And I'm learning a lot about Psalm 23 that I didn't know. Um, and then of course we talked about uh, Donald Whitney's praying the Bible, super helpful for helping you think about how to pray scripture. If you don't have that book, I really recommend it. And um, I think there is an excerpt of that maybe on our website, on the resource page, the, at least the link to the book. But so um, we pray fixed times, praying scripture verses that are meaningful to you, that no temptation is overtaking you, but such as is common to man. So the scripture that's good for you is probably good for your friends and family and the people that you're praying for throughout the day. So, um, but there's a third thing that helps me pray more ceaselessly, and that is um, prompts to pray. Um, and I've listed three of them there. There are probably many, many others, but I've listed three. Um, creation, the multiplicity of forms, the hummingbird, the fox, the raven, the sparrow hawk the otter, the dragonfly, the water lily, and on and on. It must be a great disappointment to God if we are not dazzled at least 10 times a day. So creation is like God's way of saying, psst, remember me? Hey, psst. And he's just dropping into your life uh, flowers. And so what, one of the things that I find helpful to pray is I pray, God, show me your glory. And I see things that I don't normally see. Steph and I ride bikes three times a week together when we're on our rhythm. We ride out in the in Franklin County on the back roads. And when I pray that prayer, I see things that I don't see. We, North Carolina has the most beautiful ditches I've ever seen. <laughs> and if you don't pray that prayer, you'll never see them. But this is yellow season. All the flowers, the golden rod, and everything is blowing up yellow in the ditches. I guess God, earlier it was purple. A lot of purple flowers, early summer, late spring. Now they're all the yellows are, and I see that when I pray that prayer. I see the trees, I see the sky, I see, you know, birds on the wing in flight near me. I, I see all kinds of things because I've prayed and asked God to show me your glory in creation. And so um, creation is intended to be a prompt for us to worship the creator. Um, now, for that to work, it does mean that you have to have a measure of leisure such that you notice 
creation, right? When you're going all out, flat out, and if that's, if that's your mindset when you're commuting or driving or walking or whatever you're doing, if it's, it's as fast as you can go, as hard as you can go, it's hard to see the beauty of God in creation. So it does, it does require some leisure. So that may mean a walk in the evening or a bit of time on your, on your front porch or um, it may mean um, some, some measure that's not as fast paced um, or at least the spirit of seeing what God is, has done about you. Hurry is one of the great enemies of ceaseless prayer, I think. Um, so a creation is intended to be a prompt. Places are tended to be a prompt. And uh, your neighborhood is intended to be a prompt for you to pray. As you, as you drive through your neighborhood, as you walk in your neighborhood, Steph and I try to walk uh, most evenings together and we pray for our neighbors when we walk in our neighborhoods, part of what we do. Um, so, so your neighborhood is intended to be a prompt for you to pray. You don't know what to pray, you pray, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy on so and so who lives in that house. We don't even know them, we may not even know their name. But we pray your mercy upon them. You can just pray as you walk through your neighborhood um, you can pray every time you walk onto North Wake's campus. Um, you can pray for other families when you walk into the doctor's office. You know, anywhere you go, you, you can see prompts to pray. Um, when you drive by, there's prayer walking, there's drive-by prayer. When you per, drive by friends' houses, you know, you own by, if you happen to know where other North Wakers live, I drive by several North Wakers houses on my way home every day. I always pray for them. I usually don't know what specifically is going on in their life, so I pray for mercy. As I drive by George Robinson's house, I pray he's on North Main Street. He should get more prayer than anybody. We all drive up and down North Main Street a lot. So I pray mercy upon George and Kat and their kids, you know, I, I, if I don't know anything else to pray. And a lot of times that will get me started praying in more meaningful, uh, fuller ways. So places, driving by other churches, Driving by North Wake, pray for North Wake when you drive by. Um, if there's a church near your home, pray for that church. Pray for their pastor. Um, if you drive by hospitals or schools, I mean, you know what goes on in hospitals and schools, so pr pray. Just pray the mercy of God upon those places. And so places can really be prompts for prayer as well. The third one that I'll mention lastly is one that I found m most helpful, and that is the daily rhythms or rituals, what I call pinning prayer to those things. So I get out of bed almost every day, right? Try to. And so I have prayers associated with getting out of bed. I pray for my family every day when my alarm goes off before I get out of bed, I pray for my family. It's the first thing I do. And why do I do that? Because I've associated it, I've connected it with getting out of bed. Right? Then every night I wear two rings, I uh, wear a, a wedding band and a cross, and I take those off and I put them on every day and I pray the great commandment. I pray that I would love neighbor well when I put on my wedding band and I pray that I would love the Lord my God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength when I put the other one on. Now, that's because I've connected those prayers to that act that I do every day, right? So you, um, I pray for strength to serve the Lord when I take my multivitamin every day, right? It's supposed to make me strong. So I do, I pray for, I have prayers connected to every pill I take. Um, the bathroom is like a shrine to me because I have all these, <laughs> right? It's like a prayer room because I have, you have rituals in the bathroom, right? Beautiful, uh, I learned from Julia um, uh, in, she's in Burma, she, we sent her last year. And her thing was brush for Burma. So when you brush your teeth, you pray for Julia in Burma. And I can't get that out of my head. <laughs> so now I'm brushing my teeth. What else am I thinking about while I'm brushing my teeth? You know? So I often pray for Julia. Um, and so you could have a sock putting on prayer, a belt tightening prayer, a hair brushing prayer, a shower prayer, you, know, you name it. Anything you do, a, a getting to work prayer, a, a getting home prayer, 
Um, you know, we already do this, right? You've, you've pinned prayer to meals. You say grace at meals. So you've already done this. You already see how it works. You already do it multiple times a day because you connect a prayer to eating and you eat. So, so anything like that, um, anything that you do on a regular daily basis, if you can connect a short scripture or meaningful prayer to it, um, prayer is finding its way more ceaselessly. Now I've, I've often said the real key to actual ceaseless prayer is that if you had a prayer associated with looking at your phone, then you would be praying ceaselessly because you look at your phone a lot during the day, right? The younger you are, the more ceaseless your prayer would probably be uh, throughout the course of a day. Um, yeah, and I wear this bracelet specifically because when I fiddle with it, I pray that mercy prayer. Christ have mercy, Lord, I'm around wherever I am, whatever I'm doing, I try to do that. So it's just a way of reminding me um, to pray. So um, some of you do this already. Um, I'd love to hear ways that you've associated prayer. I know people who, when they get dressed, they pray through the armor of God. You know, they put the shirt on, the breastplate of righteousness, and they put their belt on, and they gird their loins with truth. And they brush their hair, and they put on the helmet of self. So you can do that kind of thing. I've done that a number of times. That's been helpful for me. Anybody else have prayer associated with anything that you do throughout the course of the day? Yeah, Kevin. Uh, I remember you spoke on this uh, at the men's retreat. And one of the things I've been trying to do since then is every meeting I have for work, there's a little ping that tells me, like, hey, your meeting's in 15 uh, minutes. So I've tried The to dreaded use, ping. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So I've tried to use that as a prompt for prayer that I would conduct myself in uh, a manner that would honor God in the meeting. Oh, that's great. It's great. I think Mark's doing, Mark Lindsay's doing the exact ping prayer. You guys could compare ping prayers. He's got the same thing going. He was sharing with me. You know, you can use your phone towards this end too. Your phone is stalking you. It knows where you are, right? It knows where a home is and it knows where work is. So you can put in a scripture uh, and when you get home, it will pop up and you can pray that scripture now that you've arrived at home. I find Philippians 2 very helpful for that. You can do it when you arrive at work. Uh, I find um, the foot washing verse in John 13 very helpful for arriving at work. Um, but you can, you can redeem technology a little bit um, that way if you, if you want to, because it is, you may as well use it. It's, it knows where you are. You may as well use it for the glory of God somehow. So. What ceaseless practice would you like to experiment with this week? So in the lab this week, are you going to work on bracketing your day with prayer or maybe a midday prayer time? Or are you going to try praying some of the short scripture prayers? The Lord's Prayer is a great one. The Kyrie, um, any of those, um, the scriptures that you're meditating on. Or are you going to try to do some of this pinning prayer to stuff you do, um, places you go kind of thing? So let me, let me send you out with this simple blessing. This week, may you rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, knowing that this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you.